And welcome back. It is Sunday sit down time with us now a very special guest. We have six time national champion and now Olympian Carissa Schweitzer, one of the greatest Mizzou athletes of all time coming to us from Park City, Utah, where she's training to, to get ready to go to Tokyo. So how, how are things going in, in Park City right now? Yeah, I know. It's great. It feels weird. I just obviously just competed at the trials and had this like huge emotional high and now just back to training. So uh, I'm excited for it and ready to get focused and ready for Tokyo. Well, you're the, the first U.S. athlete to qualify in both the 5K and the 10K since 2008. Doesn't happen very often at all. Congratulations on that feat. Uh, I know after after the, the 10K race, you were asked if you're going to do both of them in Tokyo, and you said you're going to have to wait and see. Have you have you made a decision yet if you'll do both? Yes, made the decision. I'll be doing both in Tokyo. I think I was just really excited after the race, and I was just like, yeah, of course I'm doing both, but I realized I did need to talk to my coach before. And um, we both decided like the 5K is probably the focus, but the 10K is a new event for me. And it's really good that I'll be getting experience and seeing what I can do on that kind of stage. So I have it written down here. The 5K is August 2nd. The 10K is August 7th. So for you, is that, is that ample time to, to regroup after the 5K to, to get set for the 10K? It'll definitely be hard, especially since the 5K has prelims, but um, I think, I mean, I did it at the trial, so um, it's definitely manageable. It's just going to be um, much faster <laughs> at the Olympics, but I'll, I'm ready for it. What is the biggest challenge of doing two events? I guess it's a challenge, but it's also, I guess, an opportunity as well. I'd say the biggest challenge is just refocusing. Um, it was definitely hard after the 5K, just making the team and just like you're celebrating you're excited but then you're also in the back of your head you're like i have to run a 10k and regroup for this so um i think me and um at least my training partner we did a really good job of just kind of like focusing and getting ready to uh, attack the 10k well i know it was, it was super hot especially for your 10k performance uh out at the olympic trials in, in eugene oregon how, how is that kind of going to prepare you or, or how alike will that be to what you might face in tokyo It'll actually be pretty similar, so um, I'm not super excited about that part, but um, I know we'll be prepared for it, and the humidity and the heat is definitely going to be hard in Tokyo, but um, yeah, I think we'll be ready for it. When are you going to head out to Tokyo for, uh, for preparations? Yeah, we actually can't fly in until three days before. They're just very strict with COVID protocols, and... Um, we're going to train actually in Hawaii for a little bit and get used to the heat and humidity there and then fly over to Tokyo. Well, that's not so bad. Get a little, you got <laughs> Park City, get a little Hawaii, then a little Tokyo. Um, yeah, that, I guess that's one of the COVID protocols, but, but what else are you going to be dealing with uh, that probably won't be like any other Olympics? Well, just, I mean, we have to get tested every day and then we'll have, um, tracking too on our phone for uh, contact tracing. So there's just a lot of protocols and obviously the no fans and no family and friends. So that part's gonna be definitely hard. Um, but the fact that they're just making these Olympics happen in general is something that we're all very grateful for. So there are no, no none of your family members, nobody gets to, to come travel with you? No, it's gonna be sad, but I do have a lot of people that I train with that made the team. So all of them and my coaches, so. They'll feel just like most of our COVID meets, honestly. We got really lucky at the trials that we were able to have some family and friends join. And I know my parents and my um, friends were just really excited just to be able to see me race there. And they're sad about Tokyo, but um, obviously, given the circumstances, understandable. Well, you know, this time last year, we, we weren't sure what was going to happen. I'm sure for you as, as an Olympic athlete, that must have been tough. Uh, how... how was that year off for you? I guess it wasn't a year off, but year of not having the Olympics. It seems like it, it kind of paid off for you, but, but what was it like? Yeah, it was definitely hard. And um, I don't think I realized how this having a whole nother year, I, the whole time I was thinking about, it's just going to benefit me being able to train for a whole nother year, but it was actually pretty mentally exhausting. And um, it was basically just felt like we had a two year build up for the Olympics and it's been a long, long journey, but I was excited to have that extra year to just chase after some fast times in the 5k and 1500, because 
that's normally something that we don't really get to do as often. And now going into the Olympics, I have those fast times under my belt and I have that confidence going into it that I can definitely be a contender. Are, are there any concerns for you about the coronavirus there and, and going to, you know, into a different country? Uh, definitely some concerns for sure. I know that they'll do a very good job of um, just making sure everyone that comes in there is going to be safe. And like, I know a lot of us are vaccinated and just um, trying to follow all the protocols that we can and are trying to be distanced from people even before we go over there. Just a lot of um, stuff that I haven't even read up on <laughs> completely yet that we'll have to take into consideration. And what are your personal goals uh, going to your first Olympics, getting to two, two events? What, what, do you, what do you hope to accomplish uh, when you return to the United States? Yeah, I mean, the experience of just going there is going to be huge. But I know at the end of the day, like, I, I don't want to train just to make the team. I want to be a factor in the race. And I think that's my main goal is just um, coming home away with a medal or not. I just want to be a factor and I want to, like, be there regardless if I can take one home or not. Have you thought about what it what it might feel like during opening ceremonies and, and, and you know going up to the start line of your first race, uh, you know representing your, your country? Um, no, I haven't yet, but I feel like it just makes me nervous just even thinking about it. But I did get some good advice from um, one of my old coaches at Mizzou, and they're just like, really just treat it like any other race because the second you start to think of all those nerves and everything it just um, puts a lot of pressure on yourself. So just treating it kind of like it's another big event, but not really putting all the pressure on yourself that it's the Olympic Games. Well, you are the, the first runner from the zoo to make the Olympic sense to Tasha Kaiser Brown. I'm curious, were you, was that who you're referring to? That's who I was referring to. Yes. What, what, what was that conversation like? Did she, did she wish you congratulations after you qualified? And I, I imagine that might've been a, a special conversation. Yeah, no, she definitely, she wished me after the 5K and then the 10K. And um, it's been really cool just to have her as like a mentor. And she's given me a lot of advice um, at Mizzou, like heading into the national champions and stuff, just because she's been in those positions. And it's definitely just like a high pressure situation. And um, sometimes it's all just about managing that kind of pressure. How do you think Mizzou shaped you as an athlete and, and to get to where you are today? Yeah, I mean, I just even talking about Natasha Brown wasn't even like my head coach or anything. And she the fact that I had so many people that would come out and support me and truly just wanted to see the best um, helped me so much. You don't really get that too often in programs. Usually you're either like lost in the mix or um, there's you only really like communicate with one coach. But Mizzou truly was like a family and it was really like even if I was the only one competing out there or if there was the whole team there it just either way was the same everyone was with me well you graduated from Mizzou in 2018 I'm curious what, what's it been like to be a professional runner since then uh you know what, what's that like uh definitely been just a whirlwind with uh COVID and then with the Olympics being postponed I definitely don't think I have a normal professional career yet but um it's been exciting nonetheless, and I'm just happy that I've been able to accomplish all that I have since uh, my college years. Well, it's timely in the news, uh, especially this week with the name, image, and likeness. So I'm, I'm interested to hear what your thoughts are on, uh, you have a sister on the team right now who's in college at Mizzou. What do you think of uh, athletes' opportunity in college to, to profit off that? Yeah, I mean, I think it's awesome. It's definitely like your your name and your likeness is um, what you're profiting off of. And I feel like you should always be able to make those sort of income if like that's a possibility for you. Do you think, uh, how, do, how do you think that would have changed your college career if that was an opportunity that you would have had? Um, I'm not really sure, but uh, I do think that it would help like further communications and further like relationships with those kind of sponsors because uh, and now it being in a professional world, it is really important to have not only like your main Nike contract or something like that is your main sport, but also to have other sources of income is also important to help just like save and put away money and um, get ready for the real world. 
do you think that'll be something that the track and field athletes, you know, not just at Mizzou, but across across the country are going to take advantage of? And do you think that they can have success doing it? I really hope so. I know um, social media has just been such a big change in the last like five, 10 years. And it's really been you've I mean, we've all seen it that you can make a decent amount of income off of it. And I think it's really cool that now athletes will be able to do that as well. Well, Carissa, good luck in Tokyo. I know everyone in mid-Missouri, all the Mizzou fans out there are going to be cheering for you. Uh, it's, you know, we're so proud to, to see you do so well. And, uh, you know, good luck with everything. Safe travels and uh, bring home some medals for us. <laughs> yes, thank you so much. All right, Carissa Schweitzer, thanks so much. And we'll be right back after this.